Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw. Unfortunately, we have to do another one of these emergency news beef news shows uh, because there has been yet another round of releases from the WWE. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp tweeted earlier tonight that the following names have been released from the WWE. Uh, all of Hit Row. So Top Dollar, Isaiah Swerve Scott, uh, uh, Ashanti Adonis, John Morrison, Tegan Knox, Drake Maverick, Shane Thorne, and Jackson Riker. Yeah, uh, Sean Rossap also reported that the the reason given for these releases were take a guess, Steve. Budget cuts. Budget cuts. According uh, to, uh, he, from John Laurinaitis. Apparently. He also continues for those asking. I've not heard of any additional cuts in this round. That doesn't mean they will or will not happen tonight. Uh, so yeah, um, just. I, I figured this would be like just a quarterly earnings call thing, but yeah, apparently so it's just, uh, just going to keep on happening. Whenever thing. they want to do it, apparently. Andrew Zarian had a couple of tweets, uh, said, uh, quote, spoke to a source within WB. Many within the company were blindsided, blindsided by this set of the releases. He continues in a subsequent tweet, quote, when I spoke to a very reliable source at WB last week, the belief was that the previous set of releases would be it for 2021, but with anticipation, this would be a regular occurrence moving forward. Hit Row had one match since being called up. One match. They had like two or three segments. I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's like they weren't even given a chance. You know? I think I'll be honest, man. Like I I don't understand it from the context of don't you want to build for the future? I don't understand it from that standpoint. I'm starting to get the picture that they, I mean, on one hand I do, on the other hand I don't. If the if like the idea is so, like Lady Frost had a thing on Twitter uh, earlier this week where she talked about, I believe she said something along the lines of at her tryout she was told that she was like too old. They were looking for people in their twenties, for uh, women in their twenties, mind you. So, on main roster, it would seem that they have their main event scene set. And they feel like that's going to keep them going for a while. And and the mid card is set. And it's all guys who have been there for seven to ten years. They evidently feel like they have enough and that anybody who doesn't pass a very, very specific criteria is, the, is not needed. And that when they do need new talent... They either pull from 2.0, I guess, or they could just get it back because, they, I mean, you know, even with AEW out there, AEW are not going to sign everybody. I From this list, I don't know. I mean, you would think that it'd be a certainty that Swerve Scott would either land in AEW or New Japan would really want to maybe because mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. he's talented top to bottom. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's a huge star. He's a huge star. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I mean, that's – I mean, maybe – Maybe John Morrison, but like beyond that, I mean, the, 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 the no matter what, like they're going to be available in free agency. So WWE is just like, oh, whatever, I guess. I mean, again, it's just it's sort of just the the unfortunate result of hoarding talent when you change your philosophy and that philosophy is, oh, all of a sudden we don't need talent. We have plenty. We're good. We can slice our roster. Denise Salcedo on Twitter has. The li- the running list. It's it's insane. The last two years, it's the amount of names, the names themselves who have been released. It is crazy. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. I mean, if, I guess if they're if they're if their philosophy now is because this is what it seems to be, and maybe I've read this somewhere, and I don't I, I don't remember the source. Like, uh, I think it was when Bronson Reed got released. Uh, the idea was he had that dark match. Vince didn't think he was going to fit into what he wanted in the main roster. Then, rather than, you know, uh, c- kind of spinning wheels with him on the main roster before getting released down the line, they'll release him now. You know, mm, yeah. If that's their philosophy, then you know we see names like Hit Row, like Tegan Knox, who are recent call ups from NXT, who in in in, in a, a lot of respects weren't given a real chance 
to get any sort of footing on the main roster. Yeah. But like, how can you make a determination on, on a handful of appearances, whether these individuals are going to be mainstays on raw or SmackDown or not? I just don't get it. You, you'd think there has to be a, a, a certain sample size by which you would make that de- determination. I don't know how one match in like three segments is enough. I just don't know. I think with Vince, I mean, I, I, I look, I, I'm with you. I agree. I'm trying to see this through the lens of a 75 year old Logan Roy esque yeah. man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, it, it, it honestly just seen number one, it's got to, this has got to be devastating to Triple H. All that work he poured into developing and just nothing out of it done. Like Swerve was one of his guys. Um, the whole all of Hit Row was him and was him and HBK saying, "Hey, you guys want to get together?" Um, Tegan Knox, he was a huge fan. He wanted the world for her. This is horrible. Like it, is. it, it, it really awful. is. And you know what's it's funny, awful. dude, is that um, Shotzi Blackheart posted on her Twitter some footage from just some vloggy type stuff from some music festival she went to this past weekend, I think. And there was like somebody took video of her like crowd surfing. A bunch of people were, were crowd surfing her. And I'm thinking to myself, that's Shotzi. Like WWE's never going to figure her out. They will, they will never figure her out. And it's not going to be until she goes to like AEW or something that that she'll be figured out. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I mean, I, I again, I understand that there is a massive shift in philosophies with WWE right now that is completely antithetical to everything that Triple H had been tasked with establishing, and it is just crumbling to pieces at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's 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 absolutely sad for people who have their jobs there, and now they have to relocate or deal with vis- visa issues. You got Shane Thorne, you got Drake Maverick, who now probably mm-hmm. have to deal with visa issues. Tegan Knox, Tegan, probably sorry, too. Tegan Knox as well, probably has to deal with visa issues. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I'm very happy that the the independent scene these days really does seem to be making a massive comeback. Like you look at what Prestige Wrestling is gonna is mm-hmm. doing, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, they're coming to our area soon. I'm looking really forward to whatever they have to bring to, yeah. to Sacktown. But yeah. still, the bottom line is, you know, a lot of these wrestlers, you know, hone their craft over years and years, like in some cases, you know, a decade or more. Yeah. To get signed. To get signed. To and, prove themselves in the largest platform possible for them. And the biggest company on the planet, the biggest pro wrestling company, a company, mind you, that is probably worth over 10 times what AEW is worth. Mm-hmm. Over ten times what AEW is worth, uh, had a had at one point this pretty ambitious plan for global localization, which you can call them out on the hubris of that. It was going to employ a lot of people, putting performance centers all over the globe, uh, uh, like a secondary NXT show in addition to the NXT Prime show. They were going to employ, they had employed a ton of people. And uh, and then now that philosophy is is just, you know, going away. Like those spots are are much fewer and far between now. Like they, they've, they've now dropped from the total workforce. However many jobs Denise Salcedo has in her thing, all those spots it's, are now spots that are not available. It's an extensive list. It's, it's it, You look at the list and it's pretty shocking. It is shocking. Absolutely shocking. So, I mean, every time, every time this happens, I mean, I don't know, I know, I don't really know what to say other than it sucks. It yeah, sucks. it does. It it, it, really it absolutely sucks, sucks. and it's, it really it's sucks for 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 people like us who enjoy watching. You know, like when Jericho showed up in WWE, you can have moments like they when if 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 they brought out Hit Row. From their call up in NXT, number one, if they had a decent run in NXT, and then you bring them up to main roster and they step to the tribal chief and then they fall back down into whatever mid card slot that they have to then build their way back up to. Exactly. But you have exciting moments like that that are building stars that I thought you'd mm-hmm. be able to make money off of, but mm-hmm. no, you know, every apparently, squeezing apparently. every little bit for the profit. 
you know, as opposed to growing the business, paying the business back that has built your company. Yeah. I know, I know. You know, and it's, it's exacerbating a, a problem they've had for years, which is building new stars. So when the legends of today can't wrestle in the future, who are the part timers they're going to employ to try to pop ratings? You know, yeah. And unless you invest the time in building up new stars, and that means a, a, a thriving mid card, you know, now, yeah, because your future main eventers are going to be mid carders today, yeah, and they've they don't focus enough time in terms of creative on the mid card. Yeah. And with releases, concert releases, they're gutting it. Absolutely gutting it. Yeah. It, it just goes to show. It's like, why put effort into building hit row when you can roll with the same people in the mid card that you've been rolling with for the past five years, you know, and this is nothing against, I, I would hate to see Cesaro or Dolph or Bobby Roode lose their jobs, but it's the same guys in the same roles. Cesaro's not growing at all. Nope. He's not. He's not. He's not being elevated or anything. And he, he's not really being you. I mean, the Ridge Holland's still there. You know, he's a young guy. Maybe Vince is like, oh yeah, let's let's. And and how much success are they going to have with that creative? Him being just a Sheamus fan. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's the creative they have in place for people like Damian Priest, who seemed like a genuine guy, and now all of a sudden. He's the Jekyll and Hyde guy, and then all of a sudden he's not even on TV. Like he's got a match of Survivor Series just by virtue of the fact that he's still champion of the U.S. Mm-hmm. champion. Mm-hmm. So like it, it is. It's it's late. We've talked about this lately. the The writing was on the wall months and months ago when things just seemed. Uh, and you have to. I wonder, man. You know when when Triple H went down with his heart condition after he had signed Samoa Joe after Samoa Joe had been released. I, I I don't I you know somebody one day is gonna write a book, somebody someday is gonna write a yeah. book because it was shortly after that things just started changing and they just started dumping talent and it's 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 terrible. It is it is it's terrible. It really is it really is and and I guess now and I I wonder in NXT 2.0 they're gonna develop talent as quickly as they can and that seems evident right now. To try I mean, we had Von Wagner who has been on 2.0 like a handful of times, suddenly showing up with SmackDown. So I wonder if it'd be a situation they're going to develop talent in NXT 2.0 as quickly as they can, get up to the main roster. If they think they have a place for them, if there's potential in them in the future, the whole time, otherwise, gone. How long do you think, how many weeks do you think is going to be before Von Wagner actually says words? Because Several. He, he was very, he was silent with Pierce, and I think this is going to be weeks of just, who yeah, is I think this it's Several weeks. Yeah, I think so. And I I'm sorry, so. like, you know, he's he's a human and I, I don't want to see him released. But it's like, come on, you're going to put him up there in, in, in and in a prominent role and not Swerve Scott. A guy who I th- I honestly thought could be like a face of the company guy. Like, how do you not see that? I know. I know. It boggles the mind. It absolutely boggles the mind. That's why I don't get I don't I don't get it. You have hit row up for a handful of weeks. And that's enough of a sample size to make a determination they don't fit into what you want to do. I you mean, know, is it that is confuses it, me? Is it a matter of? I mean, it it's it it, it couldn't be anything. It, it couldn't be. Let's just flood the market and let AEW spend themselves out of. That doesn't make you. You wouldn't anybody who have any a brain knows that that's not going to happen. No, because Tony Khan's been very selective in terms of who he's brought in from WWE. It's not like he's signing everybody. I know. This just seems like a situation where, you know, they signed a bunch of people and now there's there's new people uh, involved in the business making decisions and they decide to, to, to get the roster to a number they find acceptable, whatever that is. And it seems like if they think that whoever they are employing is not going to be stars on whatever for whatever their vision of wrestling is, then they're going to release them. Yeah. And then I don't I just don't know how you see swerve and don't see a huge star that just boggles my mind and that just goes for a lot of people who've been released i just don't get it swerve has that like camera charisma that you don't get very often you know yeah. and that goes for a lot of people who've been released it does. a lot of it people does. have been released really and i does. just don't understand it yeah and especially like okay four weeks we'll have you up whatever it is it has been about four weeks yeah, four or five so. weeks yeah we'll have you up we'll have you up on tv and you can make that determination without giving them a real opportunity mm-hmm you know, it, it, I just don't understand it. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. 
I don't get it, and I'm 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 never gonna get it. And I, I know that there's going to be, you know, I mean, I think the reasons are, are fairly obvious. They're just switching up their plan and they, they, they're they they're only going to retain who they want to retain. And the, mm-hmm. it's going to be the same tried and true names. I don't understand how you wouldn't want to grow and pay back the industry um, and, and, and bank on its future. I, 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 I know. Maybe, maybe they plan on selling in 2024. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I don't, know. I, don't you know. Know to, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't we'll, get it. We'll continue don't to monitor it. the situation. Uh, we're going to be back uh, tomorrow night, of course, for yes. our uh, Rampage watch along and then our Rampage slash Smackdown review. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Do us a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Uh, and until then, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.